So a little bit of a chilly morning here, but uh, I was out checking the barley to see how it's doing and how it emerged and also if uh, I should be thinking about maybe doing some in-crop weed control. Had pretty good emergence. The barley come up pretty nice. The, you can kind of see the rows pretty good, so that's good. And I'm starting to get some volunteer canola. So, and a few other little weeds, some broadleafs I can pick out in here, but uh, I'm just going to see if I can find some other ones here. But mostly it's volunteer canola. For the most part just seeing if there's any really much else but there's some other broad leaves coming up and i'm sure there's the odd wild oat in here somewhere too a lot of times those are a little harder to find usually in between the rows if it isn't barley it's there's a good chance it's going to be a wild oat starting to come but so i'm looking at in the next three or four days getting out here Probably on Monday, today is Thursday. So I gotta get stuff lined up for chemical and that to uh, make sure I'm ready to go if the crop's ready and the weather's decent on maybe Monday or Tuesday of next week to get some of this under control, get the in-crop done so that uh, the crop has a good fighting chance against it. And uh, also, uh, the fact that you never know with the weather, it could be windy or maybe even if we're lucky, maybe some rain. So the next field to check here is canola into some wheat stubble. It's not quite as uh, obvious that there's something growing here. When you're driving by or whatever on the road or on the highway, you wouldn't even think anything was growing here yet, but you have to look a little closer when it comes to canola. Yeah, so you can Kind of see where the air cedar went through here, the rows of the straw that are still standing. So in between them is where we planted the canola. So then when you look down, you can see the canola coming. You can see there's some weeds, how it's a, it's a little different leaf uh, shape and everything. So you know that's not a canola. But yeah, you can see that those are called cotyledons. They're the first two leaves that come um, before the true leaves. So they call these cotyledons. This is kind of when we're watching for uh, flea beetle damage. So any specking or yellowing on the plant could be caused by flea beetle feeding. But uh, right now I'm not seeing any, which is good. So once the plant gets past this cotyledon stage, then uh, it's strong enough and there's enough mass that any feeding won't really affect yield as much, but right now it's pretty uh, susceptible to any flea beetle damage. So this uh, field is still a ways away from doing the in-crop. I need to get to at least two true leaves, usually four true leaves kind of thing, and watching the, the weed pressure to make sure that the weeds are up and coming so that you can get a, get a good kill on them and allows the plant itself to uh, grow past and to kind of shadow the weeds so that they can't grow but but so far i'm pretty happy with the emergence um and there are some weeds starting to come but this is still probably a good week to 10 days away from even thinking about spraying it so it's i still have a little bit of time on this unlike the cereals where the wheat and barley i might have to start doing them sooner than later so i've started working on my post seeding project which is uh repairing my spray trailer. I'm not going to have a lot of time to work on it before spraying with the in-crop getting close. So, but I've removed the two, uh, kind of the little round 12, 50 gallon tanks that were on there. I had the blue ones, which were the heavy plastic for transporting, but still, uh, they weren't the nicest. They were a little bit taller and uh, would kind of slosh around, but I bought that nice little horizontal black tank, which will be nice. It has baffles in it. It'll be a lot nicer for hauling water and, uh, just a little more compact, not quite as high, a little, little easier to uh, drive down the road if it's like half full or whatever. So starting to work on that, I need to uh, 
do some painting, restaining, and some other things to the trailer. So next couple days I'm going to be working on that and uh, hopefully be able to show you guys the, the final result here. Here's the tanks I was talking about, the, the two blue 1,250-gallon tanks. I took them off. I, once again, uh, another great use for the Zoom Boom. This guy's it would be a little awkward to move around otherwise. So, but yeah, so I put them in the shop so they wouldn't blow away. But I'm gonna set them up as nurse tanks during um, spraying, so I can fill them up with water and be able to come and grab water quick from the farm. Uh, it's just kind of handy to have that set up. It'll help uh, help ease some of the pressure at spraying too. So I got done the redecking where the tank's gonna go. That'll help with. Uh, keeping it a little stronger when I put the tank on it. Now the fun part, trying to get the tank into place with the zoom boom. <laughs> well, it actually fits. Just gotta kinda get it placed properly, but got a little gap here that I can fill in. But the other side, it fits almost perfect, so pretty lucky. Well, that and I measured it lots, but I got more room in my uh, area now where I work on stuff, like get chemical in and stuff, so that'll be nice. This side, the groove fit right in the old notch, and I still got to get it pushed up against here, but put some straps on it, and I might have to put a 2 by 6 in the front just so that it's tight so it doesn't shift forward and backward stuff and but get it blocked in front and back and strap down and should be good to go so I picked up a, another little project for this spring this guy's gonna go on one of my farm king 1370 swing augers that I use at harvest and this is designed to replace the uh, original swing that was on my farm king and it's very similar the end and that is kind of the same it's got similar wheels to the brion cramble that i have right now for moving it side to side but what this one does is where it hooks into the actual auger this guy will extend in and out so it actually slides in that tube this is the splines to engage it into the auger itself. So it's got a little bit of play. I think there's about 24 inches it can go back and forth to uh, still line up so it'll, or still line up so it'll uh, drive. And also the outlet on the bottom of this guy will, will line up. But what I can do is I can pull alongside with my semi and then just this guy will go straight under it. Before I had to kind of line everything up and have the wheels just right to swing under. And this will hopefully speed up harvest. But yeah, I went and I kind of spoke for this at uh, the farm show in Red Deer and uh, just went and picked it up out at Clive, which isn't very far from here. They're built in Clive, Alberta. And uh, I got a nice tour of the shop. The, the fellow that I was speaking to on the phone and kind of bought it from, he... Uh, Gave me a nice tour of their of their workshop and all the machining and everything they're doing and they're pretty well known like this is uh this is all over western canada actually north america and a lot of the mainstream companies are starting to use these guys radono to uh to build these for their swings so it was pretty cool to get a tour of the shop and the and the workshop and all that stuff and where they're building them and but yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it out and I'll probably be posting videos at Harvest of it working so you guys can kind of understand better how it works. But I got to, lots of guys on Twitter were telling me, yep, you'll never go wrong with one of these guys to buy them. It'll speed time, you'll just, it'll speed up Harvest and, and help you with unloading. And so, so we will see.